And now for our third talk of the evening, which means our last before intermission, I'd like to welcome Christine Liu to the stage to talk about something that I'm pretty sure you never even thought of as a potential activity to do with your life. My name is Christina, and I'm here to tell you about Sonora Webster Carver, the horse diver. <laughs> so she was born on February 2nd in 1904. She was the first and most famous horse diver at the Atlantic City Steel Pier. She, this was a woman that loved horses more than people. When she was a child, she was caught red-handed trying to trade her little brother in for a horse named Sam. So some of you may be wondering, what is horse diving? Well, it's not this, but not far from this. It's where you convince a horse to walk up to a tower and jump off into a pool of water. Kind of like that. In 1923, Sonora sees the diving horse for the first time. She sees a girl in a red swimsuit, brown football hat, and white tennis shoes do this. She sees what is most likely Lorena Carver, who's in the picture. Lorena Carver is Sonora's future sister-in-law. The idea of diving horses was from this guy, Doc Carver. He was a sharpshooter in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. He's 84 when he first meets Sonora. Carver gets this idea, the lore, so, so he says. He claims that he got the idea when he was on his horse and the bridge broke and the horse jumped into the river. So this is the tower. It's 40 feet tall. Sometimes they made it 60 feet, but they took it down a notch for safety. It's 20 feet long, and the pool that the horses and the diver were expected to land in was only 11 feet deep. <laughs> this was part of a type of entertainment known as free acts. It was basically where amusement parks and fairgrounds would hire entertainers to come to draw the crowds in. Other acts of this nature are human cannonball, circus, cat boxing. <laughs> So how, how does one get involved with horse diving? Well, Sonora sees an ad in the newspaper for auditions for women that knew how to swim, dive, and love traveling. It was actually a recommendation from her mother that she do this, but her mother was not a very level-headed person. More than once, her mother has moved homes and not told her children. So her children would come home and find an empty house and had to go to the neighbors to get the new address. So at 19, Sonora goes, does the audition, and gets accepted. Initially, she doesn't accept the job because, well, it might be a little bit crazy. But she sees the horses and she's like, yeah, I'm doing this. After that, she gets whisked away to Durham Lakeside Amusement Park. She has seven weeks to train and get in shape. Her first horse that she dives on is on a horse named Kalatwa, which is actually the horse shown here. Her first dive is only off 12 feet. So how one gets on to the tower is the diver has to climb to the platform. You can't ride the horse up. The horse doesn't have a saddle. So when the diver goes up, they signal the horse to come up at a gallop. And then when they get to the top, you jump off the railing, land on the horse, grab onto the harness, and just hold on as the horse jumps off. <laughs> Seems reasonable. This is the first time she wears what would be considered her, her trademark outfit. It is a modest red wool bathing suit with a rounded neck and a long torso. 
Her practice outfit included heavy pants, socks, and canvas swimming shoes. This was to protect her legs from the friction burns that she would get from riding on the, the horses. She also had to wear a football helmet because when the horse landed in the pool, it was very, there was a very real possibility of the horse's head popping up and breaking either your nose, your cheekbone, or your collarbone. If you didn't stay on the horse when you landed in the pool, you ran the risk of getting thrashed to death with the hooves. Her very first dive off the 40-foot tower would be in front of 7,000 people. She never got to practice jumping from that. She actually wasn't afraid that she would get hurt. She was more terrified of messing up and looking like a fool. For her, success meant staying on the horse until the horse got out of the pool, and she nails it. The only thing she does a little bit wrong is that she forgets to bow in the end, and afterward, she's hooked. This is how she feels about horse diving. I'll post this quote on later, but I highlighted the fun bits. Central pleasure, sheer exhilaration, deeply intoxicating. Her first near mishap doesn't happen until three years in, in the summer of 1926. This was a practice dive in Krug Park, Omaha, Nebraska. She's riding the horse named John the Baptist. When <laughs> Yes. As she does the dive, the harness comes loose, and the only thing that keeps her from falling is grabbing onto the horse's mane and hanging on. Her first public dive fail would be October 7th, 1926, in the Lexington Fairgrounds in North Carolina. Before this, she has completed 165 successful dives. She was riding Kalatwa, and she doesn't actually know why the dive failed. All she remembers is that she's in the pool and someone is reaching to help her out. She was fine and only her pride was hurt. In 1929, the diving horses find a permanent home at the Atlantic City Steel Pier in New Jersey. For their summer season, their show schedule was riding for six days a week, three to four times a day. Because of such a crazy schedule, they needed more divers and she convinced and trained her little sister Arnett to join. This is actually a photo where Sonora is by the sign and Arnett is on the other side of the ticket booth. July 14th, 1931. At 27 years old, she has her first major diving accident. She's on her horse, Red Lips, who's pictured here. He does a nosedive. Normally she would tuck to the side of the horse and they would land in the water that way. But because his dive angle was so aggressive, she had to lean back to balance the horse. Unfortunately, when she hit the water, she hit it with her face and her eyes open. She feels a dull stinging sensation and can see patchy bits of white fog. She just keeps riding. She rides again that night and for days afterwards. August 1st was when, she, when her eyes failed. She saw nothing but gray fog, and she could only see the brightest objects in the room. She still rode red lips for days after this, and finally went to the doctor when her husband basically forced her to. The doctor's diagnosis was that she had internal hemorrhaging in her eyes. Her left eye was completely blind, and her right eye was partially detached. This was the start of a long and difficult recovery process. She went to multiple surgeries, some of which including cauterizing her eyes in attempts of creating scar tissue to reattach it and pushing air in her, her eye to push the retina back. She describes the process as excruciating, but at the end of it, she stays blind. She doesn't let that stop her. About a year later, she decides <laughs> that she's gonna do this again and to get in a, in a shape, she climbs a 105 foot ladder every day. They also contact Spalding to create a new custom helmet for her with an unbreakable eye screen to help protect her eye from any more damage. During this time, she's also fighting vertigo because of her lost eyesight. At this time, in August 12, 1932, in front of 2,500 people, an accident happens in Atlantic City. 21-year-old Irene Berger slips from her trapeze at 75 feet. Her body bounces off guy wires, which affects the rigging. This then makes the other aerialist, Roxy LaRose, lose her grip and fall. 
So Nora hears the screaming of all the audience members, and she tries to run away and trips on a bench. Days, a couple days later, she finds out that these, were her, these are her housemates and her close friends, that Irene had died and Roxy's in critical condition. And she learns that she actually almost got killed too, and if she hadn't tripped on the bench, the rigging would have crushed her head. But the show must go on. There was miscommunication with the dive team, and she never actually got to practice diving from the 40-foot dive before she did it for realsies. She put on her helmet and climbs up the tower at the show, and thoughts of Roxy are running through her mind. She, when she gets to the top, she realizes that she hits her musical cue perfectly, and she then knows that she's got this. She sends the horse up and nails the dive perfectly, first time in a year. She continues to dive like this for 11 more years. Five of those years, she doesn't make public that she's blind. She finally lets a newspaper print her story because she realizes that her success as a writer could prove to be an inspiration for others. After 20 years of diving, Sonora and her husband Al decide to retire the show. It was 1942, and with World War II happening, they were having difficult times sourcing materials to keep building the towers and also people to crew the show. She doesn't fade in obscurity. Disney in 1991 makes a movie about her life, loosely based. Sonora and Arnett actually get to go to the premiere. Sonora does not like the movie. <laughs> She's quoted with saying, the only thing true in it was that I rode diving horses. I went blind and I continued to ride for another year. Sonora dies at 99 years old, September 21st, 2003. So I would like to raise a glass to Sonora and her inspiration in literally getting back up on the horse and trying again. So that was awesome. And it's also Christina's third talk for Odds Alive. Which means, are you uh, free on December 12th? Do you want a special decorative pin? I do. Well, I have a feeling the Order of the Wolpertinger is about to get another member. Can I have a hand for Christina. One of us. I, like, I think we'll keep that one, that's good. Okay, so we're almost to intermission, but a couple of last things first. So Adventure Harvey, this fine gentle Harvey right here. Uh, we have these, these wool pertangers you can buy over at the merch booth, and when you do, you can take them places and take pictures with them. And Adventure Harvey's got a large number of adventures at this point, but we believe that you can still find new ones. Uh, recent hits include Joshua Tree, Egypt, England, Berlin, a multi-Harvey experience here, and uh, we'd like to, to point out the, the evil Knievel Harvey for Daredevil. What, what was that? Har Harvel Knarvel. Thank you. I'm so sorry. And so, it's going to be time to take a cocktail break. When we come back, we have another different barnstorming story with, I think you'll, you'll agree, a, a, an important bit of local reference. We have a story a bit about a man who plummeted a lot. And the best tiger taming story you've never heard. So, drink up. I'll see you back here in about 15 minutes.